restart the computer and see if that was just the case. That might okay. just be it. Yep. Sorry yep. about Thank that. You. So who we are and what we are doing. We are completing the um, sum of our forces. This one. Quantum two. Ten seven six seven. And uh, the goal is to solve unsolvable. Originally, the first goal is to solve unsolvable. And the um, there were there there were five chapters in, in the in the course. Uh, additional pandora momentum. Addition of angular momentum, time uh, independent perturbation theory, time dependent perturbation theory, um, laser driven electronic transitions, like box here and uh, echo, and then quantum relaxation of population, right? Um, would the next Thursday will be a good time for informal exam? Friday? Next Friday. Mm -hmm. Friday. Tomorrow, probably. Okay. But uh, some of us are going through max exam, and uh, it would not be good to do it before. If, if you say it up before, then it will give him good excuse to uh, be less prepared for the max. Or the presentation. Friday, I like Friday. Like, like, like Friday? I'm um, we can do during group meeting. Oh, it's Friday. Yeah. Oh, um, oh, you can show your screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, no, let's uh, no, like, let's talk to your boss. Okay. If you can emerge to the group meeting, if not, we'll do like, a couple of hours. Good. Will she be there then? Will she come in? Probably. So. Everyone is okay uh, next Friday? Okay, good. So, we need to finish one important thing. Right now, we are going through the derivation of equation of motion for electronic degrees of freedom that will allow detailed balance principle that would allow to describe the change of occupations in the um, electronic system due to energy dissipation away to the thermal bar. When we discuss possibilities, we have seen that classical part of just some degrees of freedom oscillating around will drive the system to the infinite temperature because the flows of energy in and out are so we need quantum map. And uh, we need to do it in the second order of perturbation theory, and then make a trace over, uh, over the state of thermalized quantum map. Right? Last time, with a collective effort, we did open the big bracket and found all terms that come into this second order perturbation expression, which was a little long. Right now, we will pick up just one term, progress all details uh, up to the bitter end. Then um, I just declare how it would look like for other terms, and then by the end of the meeting, we will arrive to the bitter balance. And then I, I think it will be a perfect completion of the course. Um. So, for our informal exam, Brandon angular momentum, Levi time independent, Jabbit time dependent elevation theory, Diane uh, block defacing 
everything from chapter four, Aaron uh, relaxation. So what we are doing, and some summary of everything in his uh, schedule out. Um, she read that about 20 points that we need to, yes? You summarize chapter 4 in 3 minutes. Just give main <laughs> equations and tell who needs it. That is the example. Yes. No, no, no. You're, you performed so perfect with you in the semester. And, uh, I don't know what you should call. Your grade is almost guaranteed. Well, it is guaranteed. <laughs> but we, we target not the grades, we are not kids. We, uh, since we are in this room, in this uh, course, it means that we are pursuing different, we are pursuing different goals. We are This important meeting may, may not be, uh, there is a chance that it will be not recorded. <laughs> My hands are busy. No, some sound is recorded, but not the uh, in you can put it here. You can, but then you can be far from the power supply. Oh. And I do not believe that I'm telling you anything important. Most important things are out of the world. Yes, please. I'll record it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So you are in this room because you select, uh, because you are um, elite of the intellectual area of the book and because you target excellence in science. You put research as your life book, right? Otherwise you would not uh, sacrifice so much of your time. So, there are, you shouldn't waste much time. The, just a little reminder that you all already have it in your hands. So we have simplest example of electronic system, just two, uh, two level systems, and it is surrounded by buff of harmonic oscillators of different curvatures. They have bilinear coupling, and bus is in the thermal equilibrium. We are looking onto how the presence of this buff affects the equation of motion for electronic degrees of freedom. Last time we stopped at the integral from initial time to time t dt right trace over buff Decrease of freedom, and then we have sigma plus whole system time t prime, sigma minus, and then conjugate. If here it was plus, then first of the um, for the bath operators is B without plus initiation. And then conjugate to the second point should be this plus three prime. And then there, there are factors of phase accumulation. E to the formula is E to the power minus I T prime formula minus U. Plus seven terms of the same uh, nature having different order of these operators. Right? It is what you did by collective effort by doing this kindergarten exercise of cutting and just pasting 
the stickers on the board. So, so there is a time integral here. There is average over both degrees of freedom. There is a set of system operators that include raising or lowering uh, operator for alternating degrees of freedom and density metrics, which actually we need to propagate. And then there is a part corresponding to the path that also um, contain raising and lowering operators for this uh, harmonic path. Indices should be different because we don't know uh, which of those will be picked up for, for this procedure. One index is from first perturbation, second index is from second perturbation. And then we were using the trick of interaction feature filtering. So we put all accumulation of phase separately here, and then we will um, use it uh, with time integration. What is interesting here, if you are ever planning to return them onto classical path, noisy path, then this part, phase accumulation and path operators, can be considered as other correlation uh, function of the path. But now we are dissecting it on the smaller pieces and then we will apply all the rules to find them explicitly. So to some extent, this portion is uh, A, C, F, O, B, F. We are done with the first one. We have 5% progress. Um, not yet. Trace operator Surprises us and challenges us. What is it? Some of the other ones. Yes. So if you have two operators, like two matrices with two indices, if you need a trace, first we use sum over uh, indices that are close to each other to multiply two matrices, and then we use delta function to pull out on the diagonal and sum over it. So some of the diagonal elements, right? But what are our matrices here? What should we sample? So we do have density operator of path, and we do have operators of the uh, operators of the path. The trace over bus will not change this operator. So you can move this symbol into here. Path density matrix is a product of the density matrix of each mode. Like if you have 1,000 modes, it is a product of 1,000 matrices. And each mode has only diagonal elements, and each element uh, has decreasing value according to Boltzmann distribution. Less, 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 and less. Right? So no off diagonal elements, which means no coherence and less populations according to Boltzmann and according to temperature. If you have more than one modes, the, they enter by different frequencies. Frequency of the mode enter into the density operator of the bath density. Who are those? Yes, raising and lowering for modes. If it is the same mode, you have the same indices and uh, if different and different. Uh, the you went over it in point one. This doesn't surprise you. So in harmonic oscillator, you come from higher level to lower level by lower operator, and you come from uh, level M to higher level from specific level to higher level by raising degree. So if you perform tracing over best degrees of freedom, it means that we are making summation over indices related to uh, operators and to indices related to each specific particular density of each mode. The highlighted black ones are those that are non-trivial, that will give something interesting. The um, modes 
for which we do not have operators will result in just one. This particular solution will result in one because they are normalized and they have a good partition property. And summation over these particular modes is given non trivial result. For sure, so done is not. What if we decide to do operation like this? B will be. It will be zero. Because the annihilation operator is off diagonal, see? And this is here different, means it is off diagonal. And the this operator is diagonal. If you multiply them and trace, it will be zero. Same for uh, B bigger. It will be zero. Angular brackets are not are not applicable here, but just by a bad thing when you write them here and there. One should be specific and write trace or okay. Now what if the bath mode that has performed that has perturbed system during the first perturbation and bath mode that performed system during the second perturbation are different? If they are different, then we have indeed B K and B K prime. And because of the definition, it will be the same as B, P, B, K prime. So if the um, number index of mode is different, the average, the mean value of this operator can be uh, replaced by product of mean values. But if we already gave an argument that First order raising and lowering the rate of expectation values are zero. So it will be zero. But if the indices are the same, it will be non zero. So it means only if the first and second perturbation are coming from the same mode, then it will be non zero inference. So it means that we tell B, K, B, K prime equals. Delta K, K prime, B, K, B, K. And we set up the verbal explanation of it is that we are dealing with uncorrelated path. So there is no correlation between different modes. Uncorrelated path. So with this, we are done with point number two. What is here? Oh, just writing summation over them. Let's do yeah, different pieces. M minus one. M. And then from the second operator, the summation M. This one, and this one, and then we also have the um, summation over n, n, and then both in factor. What do we see here? We do see that there are pairs of bra and cat in corresponding summations that are merging together according to the rule of uh, anaconda and the rate. The snake eats uh, the, the summation sign 
remove delta function and we get one index less. So um, we can get rid of this and this, which should be delta m prime comma m plus one. We get rid of this summation and then we need to replace m prime two m plus one everywhere where it appears. So it will be summation m, summation m. Instead of m prime we put m plus one. Here we have m prime minus one will be m plus one minus one, which will be equals to m. Then we have another m plus one from there, m here, and then we didn't touch the um, density operator of the bus. Huh? Do you have another delta? Yes, that's correct. But what is important here? These two square roots merge together. And we are getting here solution M. Square root. Not square root, just M plus one. M. 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 And when we, before we, uh, as the way has uh, suggested, we need to find that there is another delta that will have together this another symbol and uh, we remove the index M and replace it with the M. So M is replaced by M everywhere. And then we will have summation over M, M plus 1. Uh, and when we add one more delta to uh, pursue the, this was just a method. If we need to find the diagonal elements, then uh, this um, cat and bra will be removed, and we will have summation of the Boltzmann factor. And N plus one here is important, but there is N everywhere in here. So if we perform this uh, summation, we will get N plus one where here letter N is not indexed anymore. Right now it is the Einstein distribution evaluated at the frequency of this mole, right? And this is very simple exercise, we can do it with the delta. Then, um, so n of um, is what? How do we recall, how does Bose uh, Einstein work? So? one in the nominator, exponential, plus or minus in the denominator, plus each per kt, plus or minus, minus, right? So if we plug in time equals zero, then the distribution, temperature, T capital is temperature. If you set up temperature, uh, there was a Japanese scientist, Matsubara, who told that time and temperature are equivalent up to imaginary constant because both of them are coming into the power of expansion. There is a Matsubara theory where one expansion in time replaces by expansion in temperature. Um, if you get one over what? Infinity? Zero. So the meaning is how many 
water is stored in the small at a given temperature. If kT is equal to the uh, frequency, then number will be 1 divided by e minus 1. So about 2 thirds or something a little less than 1. And if, time, if, uh, if temperature is equal to infinity, then this number of quantity will be also infinity. Right? We just recall uh, the Rosenstein distribution. We, in our progress list, we are four points uh, forward. So it's about 20% now. I'm going to make screenshots and then erase um, everything except the Many thanks to Jared for making shots and sharing. Oh. Just was a little busy time, but uh, I plan to process them and share this everyone. There's some cutting pieces and uh, comments, hopefully. Which force? Quantum force? No. Yeah, so what? Right. <laughs> it's made hmm? Wait, the force in the heat? That's it. This is the force. Does it seem so always? A very new life? We should uh, sit together, project on the bigger screen. During the weekend, go to the biggest uh, presentation room in the department. Like two or nine. Yes. And you plug, plug, in the, plug in the computer and push. Oh, <laughs> you're not a nerd. <laughs> so, I'm going to erase everything except the first line here. And then we are going to simplify, simplify, simplify. And then we will get the chicken balance and then. You still have chances. Okay. Any questions while well, I'm uh, cleaning? Or objections? So this is N of U. So K plus one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, we do it. So when when we were doing our uh, kindergarten exercise of uh, big stickers, you remember that B and B dagger operators were coming in different order. When it is B dagger times B, it will be M. When it is uh, B times the dagger will be n plus one. And this is critically important thing. This is the key of everything. It is, it is uh, the reason why we will get detailed balance. Yeah. So the difference between B dagger and... Uh, B and B. B yes. Dagger. It will, it will be responsible for different amount of energy flowing to the system and from the system, if it is away from the field. When it equilibrates, then it will be no flow, steady state. So, what do you need? Trace over each wall. I don't remember what I was meaning, but uh,
Delta K prime. Here we have N of K plus one. And here we have unchanged uh, phase function. E T on minus E K E minus I T prime on minus E. And from the trace, we still have left over by that we need to make summation over those modes that did contribute to this perturbation. So we do need to make summation over, over the modes. And this data function comes from our assumption, approximation of an related buffer. This came from the uh, so if it before summation over k prime then we apply again the rule of uh, anaconda and uh, Revit and the k prime index is replaced by k error value k prime is replaced by k the t system has the value of t minus Square summation over math modes, integral initial time, current time, d prime, sigma plus low system, t prime, sigma minus, no delta, n of u k plus 1, e to the power i t omega minus u k, e to the power minus i t prime, Omega minus mu k. So it was k prime and now it is mu k. This is the plus uh, seven, not as a number, but seven other terms. What is good? Huh? What? Yes, correct. We have strange things on the screen. I don't know if it is yet recorded. No? Maybe. So, let's so exponentials, as the right talk to us, uh, can be simplified how? E as i t minus t prime omega minus mu k. So, by now, we already did some wrap up operations, but we still explicitly con uh, consider contributions from each phonon mode, each uh, normal mode, each nuclear degree of freedom in the buffer. Right? We make summation. Like uh, the it goes to 3 and minus 6 where n is number of times. Huh? What is non -linear? Here, post, uh, linear oscillation, harmonic. There is no non-linear. Let's do just one simple thing in the meantime. Bring at least something to the end. So, we are going to make this summation. And we are going to merge this summation with this exponential. And replace some with the integral. Why? Because we want to make everything simple and we know that integration of uh, exponential has the ability, has the potential to generate data function. So, Thank you. 
And now we use this sum is replaced by integral. What will be our integration variable? We want to go over all modes. But we can, instead of counting them, mode number one, mode number two, if there are 10,000 modes, too much. We can describe the modes by V dos. Vibration of density states. You can tell just per unit alone, you have so many density of states. And the integral is uh, replaced by density of modes at given frequency. And we do d of omega minus mu k. So this will be our integration variable. So if the frequency of normal mode is in the exact resonance with the frequency of the system, then uh, our integration variable will be zero. If it goes higher or lower, it will be non-zero value. So we go from minus delta to plus delta. And later on, we can even do limit of delta goes to infinity. So the summation sign is replaced by this thing. There is all, there is also one term that I'm forgetting always, but it is not uh, one kind of problem. One needs cover. So we have operators corresponding to system or operators corresponding to bus, and we need the coupling strengths. So here we need G sub P, G sub P prime. Where this G sub K is either transition type of time uh, time series trends or it is not like common if you are talking about normal modes, um, about phone modes. So always here G, T, G, T prime. And upon this summation, it will be G, T absolute value square. G and instead of K, um, also will depend on the frequency. So coupling between square. Coupling between the, our system of interest and normal mode of a given frequency. So we are counting the buff modes not by index, just by their frequency. Okay, and the rest is coming from, from here. Times one. Use just this for this one. Times e i two times two prime. So, in case delta is small, and we are very close to resonance, then those coupling to M can be placed in front of the integration. Or small And then our, I think we are going quicker than the original plan. So trace for each mode, yes. Some over all mode, yes. Some goes into integral. So seven times, we have 35% of the rest. Okay. D, 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 T, T, minus one. Initial time T prime. And then we trace everything that depends on uh, omega. Density of states, density of modes, but let me see omega, the open square, at frequency omega, 
terms of number of quantum in the harmonic mode evaluated of two plus one. And then here we do have integral root integral minus delta plus delta d omega minus minus of k equal to the power i t minus t prime omega minus u k. We know that integral of exponential is exponential. It is especially simple if the power of exponential and integration value eta are the same. We shouldn't be shy. We should be a guest of ourselves and uh, have any trade we want. So let's uh, make the integration variable equal to the power of exponential. So I'm going to try it by t minus t prime here and divide by i t minus t prime there. Right. I'm going to switch to different uh, panel. Density of both modes coupling square. So you see, it, uh, it's getting very similar to Fermi Golden Rule, right? Times. Actually, we have an exponential of 1 over i t minus t prime that comes from. Denominator because our trick is uh, in the very integration variable, and then we have just function itself. Where omega minus mu k changes from minus delta to plus delta. Okay. So we can replace this one by e to the power i t minus t prime delta minus e i t minus t prime is minus here so times delta. E t minus t How do we simplify it? How do we name this function? Simple. Yes. Um, why? Since it's number eight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> you are educated enough. You're long enough in graduate school to know without looking at number eight. I'm long enough in graduate school to look at number eight. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, what's the name of a blind mathematician who told us how to convert exponential into Euler? Yes, Euler. I didn't know that he was blind. He was blind and he migrated from Germany to Russia. I don't know, is, is it good or bad, but it's like, and he was still writing his uh, manuscript, but uh, like styles on the arts. He went from Germany. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing like, like, No, no. Uh, in the uh, last half of uh, 18th century, there was a like, program of su support talented uh, immigrants, and it was monetarily beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <laughs> So, according to Euler, we take this imaginary unit, we take this uh, two factor, and we tell that it is a 
sine of t minus t prime times delta. Correct? And this will be t minus t prime times delta. And all of this, um, the rest, see it looks very short now. Much shorter than you were doing before. So how does this function look like? So um, t minus t prime times delta should be equal to n prime, or n integer number. Zero. Oh, but we better do t minus t prime equals n pi divided by delta. Pi divided by delta, t pi divided by delta, minus pi divided by delta. And sine will go this way. Right? And if you divide it by uh, difference, t minus t prime, it will go to very it will go higher, the uh, cancel discontinuity, 0 divided by 0 uh, in this point, and then, so the, the function will not cancel 0 here, and then it will be still in this way. So the width here is 2 pi over delta. And in the limit, in the limit of delta goes to infinity, the width which is 2 pi over delta is equal to zero. So this sync function can be considered as very good approximation of delta function, delta of t minus t prime. Okay? So all this factor, the red factor, can be replaced by delta function uh, of time difference. So what do we have now? D T minus T minus bar square initial time final time to the time uh, density upon the G square of omega and omega plus one times delta of T minus T prime. What do I miss? Uh, you know the proverb. Like, no, it's not a proverb. But by doing careful operation of all tiny step, we miss the limit. Who wants to find the error? What is missing? The key factor is missing, most important thing. Starting, starting from here. Yes, it, it was it was at this point, and it was missing missing here. So we need to have rho s of t prime rho s of t prime rho s of t prime rho s of t prime. And creation of any future should be Sigma plus Sigma minus C 
some more plus, some more minus. Good. Now we are doing much better. Thank you for writing the second part. We have the What? We just did that. Oh, okay. Um, so we have if, we, if it is not vibration to use a problem, but uh, modes of uh, optical resonator in bus, then that will be a really good problem. This mathematical approach is very general. V is, since we are, most of us, dealing with chemistry, new dose of new normal modes of new ray is most appropriate. But completely this same mathematical procedure can be applied to different styles, different physical nature of system and buffer. It's a very general fundamental approach. Okay. What is the definition of delta function? So by multiplying function at this one argument by delta function integrating, we are getting the value of function at uh, selected argument, right? So if we perform this integration, the integration and zero delta performed same way as uh, snake and red. They disintegrate and we don't have this two, two times number. So we are getting d dt plus of t minus one over h bar squared, no integral anymore. Happen squared and plus one times sigma plus rho at time t. Sigma minus plus seven. Or seven is not a number, but seven as a, as a terms. Um, we may combine together this part, which looks very similar to Fermi's golden rule, and call it um, take it again or call it. Well, we can call it anything, but it will be rate of relaxation. We, we are almost done, except that we need to do truths with um, the operators and see how the order of the uh, density operator and raising lower operators affect the flow of uh, direction of energy, dissipation for um, thermal dissipation. So this will be then over two, and then our equation is d dt along t t minus gamma. Well, let's call gamma over to everything except this n factor because it will be different uh, for different orders of, of those. Gamma over 2, n plus 1, sigma plus rho s t t sigma minus s. We are very close. We uh, let's find how far we are. So we are done with this. We are done with uh, C becoming zero delta. We defined Relaxation? Oh no, we are exactly at, at the half. I guarantee you will be ready before today. Huh? Oh, for empty, yeah. I'm also down there. Oh, so I wanted to see how that's You should go with the <laughs> um, okay. If they are recording, then we have a chance. If they don't, 
Are you patient with everyone's good right now? No, no, no. Oh, oh, no. Five to eight or something. Okay. Awesome. So let's uh, take a screen of how to eight minutes. We'll take a 15 minute break. Yeah. Let's take screen shots and then uh, um, go for the rest of the problem. It's 12 presentations, 15 minutes a piece, with a 15 minute break. In which class? Oh, wait, it's a pop -up. Yeah. So, um, what do we do? We do have our very brief result, which ends, which is in the box and ends by plus seven. And now we need to write the rest of plus seven terms, which is nothing for brave you, because you did it. You did much longer eight terms, sixteen terms. In the, in the previous uh, meeting. And now we do not have all this long um, history. It's, it looks much shorter. So let me keep maybe only the starting point, DBT. So let's populate this spot with the eight terms that we derived from last time. They always, the terms that you uh, placed on the board by stickers were always, uh, did always have the No, it is not here. I think the road should be here. Yes. So um, the sequence was always plus minus plus minus for annihilation operators. And here it was minus plus minus plus minus plus. But the difference is only where we place the row in respect to, to those and the in the sign of the of the term. So here we have plus plus row. In the second row we have minus and row in the middle, and minus and row in the middle. Here, actually, we don't need to write this one. We can do two and two. And here we have again plus, but the row goes uh, up front. We will get n plus one. <laughs> I am so pleased that someone is following. So the m plus one, or simply m depends, which factor, n or n plus 1, depends on the order of operators. Because when we, for each term, the order of the system operators determines the order of both operators when we take the trades. So for the first term, it was... Is it the n plus 1 term? So that gamma over 2? No. No, 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 no. Let's put it separately. Otherwise, we'll screw up everything and we are uh, doing nothing. It will be the same result as in the classical path. Yes. Okay, so you no, 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 no. Let's break this here. Oh. 
So conjugate to this will be D, conjugate to this will be D double, and then rho rho buffer. And we agreed that upon average it will be n plus one. And actually we need not angular but trace D. Okay? Nothing new. Now how it projects to the rest of things. What will be the factor in the second term? So it will be yes, correct. So where because of conjugation we have B Decker, B B trace equals N. Good. Now but this is okay, see. There is a little tricky thing with the middle row. So according to conjugation, for the middle row we will have B density of path, B degree. Yes. What will be the answer? This is a perfect place to make a mistake. And almost the last chance to scroll up the world of students. N or N plus one? Make a guess. Um, being so... I say N. I say N. Any other options <laughs> you're doing? Or do you disagree with the I think N minus one. I would have said zero, but I was honest with Ron. So, DM told that he is long enough in graduate school to leave the uh, plan. So, under, under the sign of the trace, one can swap the order in the sign of manner without changing the result. So, this will be equal to the trace. So, yes. And then for the here, the term here, um, trace B dagger row B. It's very confusing because in this record, B dagger comes earlier than B. But if you do the side of permutation, it will be trace B, B data row, and it will result in the country's one. Okay? And for the, for the last row, trace row B, B data. This goes here, this goes first. And for the for the last one, no B double B. Yeah, right? Correct. So most highest responsibility, the most important thing for uh, the last three students, distribute factors n or n plus one into these recordings. So n here n plus one. Here it was n. Correct. Here n plus one, and here n. Congratulations. You've got the right answer. <coughs> now we we've got the answer. This is correct equation. Quantum master equation for all three degrees of freedom. And we just need to analyze it to have some take-home message. Otherwise, we'll have only 
feelings of upsetness and so understanding the justification of how we what happens, how we apply to the real world. But in fact, this is good and good. From now on, we need just to analyze it. This, um, and the analysis is much simpler than the original. So we used all these terms, we did cycle permutation, and we did plug in and and uh, and um, terms. I am going to erase this board and um So, what is our major upset by looking at this equation right now, even if we believe that it is correct? It is still true if uh, we want to memorize it and surprise our friend by the ability to produce this equation without the cheat sheet. We should simplify it a little short, more shorthand. So um, we see that then C of last times let's write it once once again. Everything that relates to the plus one. Sigma plus sigma minus rho minus two. Sigma minus rho sigma plus plus and here sigma plus rho sigma plus sigma minus. And it's going to be two, and it's n. And now we are having sigma minus sigma plus rho minus two sigma plus rho sigma minus plus rho sigma minus sigma plus. Correct? It would be very good if we were so close to the 20 minutes before the end of the, of the course. Now we can identify that here we have a factor sigma minus times rho and sigma plus just in different order. So we can write this one. And here in this bracket you can write sigma plus comma sigma minus rho. Just commutator of, of these two factors. And then from the uh, second part we can identify that sigma times rho times sigma plus and sigma minus also coming in the commutation order. Yes. Rho, sigma plus, rho, sigma plus. And we can do the same trick so, first term corresponds to relaxation. The amount of uh, energy flow, well, we, we didn't prove that it is relaxation, but this flow of energy is more intense than this one. Right? It is always bigger by one, which is especially well pronounced if temperature is zero. Then this channel of dissipation is active and this is disabled. So the second channel that we will discover in, in a couple of minutes that it will be thermal activation has the sigma minus comma sigma plus rho bracket. 
きます。ロー、シグナル、マイナス、ホームシグナルです。This is simple enough equation that is,、um, you can try to practice memorizing if you、uh, plan to deal with quantum relaxation after you exit the classroom. So, four commutators, plus minus, plus minus, minus plus, minus plus, for relaxation and for thermal activation. On your place, I will be still upset. How do these commutators relate to real life? Give me something so that can be, can be useful. So we are already 13, and we need to write down actually, actual equations of motion for occupation of, of the levels. So from operators, from density operator, And raising l o w e r operators, we need to go to functions, to occupations. And we are going to do it immediately.、Uh, let's agree that our ground will be called A, our excited will be called B, and then sigma plus will be going from A to B, sigma minus will be going from B to A. Sigma plus sigma minus will be B, A, B, B. Yes, this one will be projector onto state B, and sigma minus sigma plus will be B, 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 B equals projector onto the state B. Do you need any comments or just nature? DM doesn't need comments. Right? This notation is nature. I see for you guys. Nature. What have you done? Spin, we, we, we call spin w e a t h e r o s Now we are going to. Look for occupation of the excited state. Rho B B. If you take matrix element of this operator in the state, in the excited state, as Brian said, from operator we get to the function. So it will be function of T. And for this、uh, function of rho v, v function of t, we can write down the equation of motion. If you would be too interested in all the details, you could do it for each of them, but for occupation of excited, we'll be enough. We'll do it and then we'll stop if you've given us enough food for thought. So, I'm returning back to this notation and quickly. Running down minus one over two, two plus one, and then I'm putting B, and then all this term. Sigma minus is replaced by, let me, let me use different color. Sigma minus is replaced by B, A. Sigma, oh, sigma plus sigma minus, we can immediately write BB. Correct? Then we write rho, and then we write B because we are looking for matrix m. So we've done this first term, minus 2. B, sigma minus is A. B, then we have rho, and then sigma plus is B, A. And then we have another B because of the because we need、uh, matrix element in front. And yes, it will be zero. 
limited to us in B rho, and then we have sigma plus sigma minus, which will be B B, and we have another B because of the bracket. Any errors uh, found here by now? No? Okay, let's do the second row for uh, thermal activation. Minus m over 2 times n. D. So, we are looking at this term. Sigma minus sigma plus will be A. Times rho times F of B. This one. The next one, minus 2, B, sigma plus is B, then rho, then sigma minus is A, B, and then another B plus B, B minus B. And then plus B times rho times sigma minus sigma plus, which will be so uh, anywhere where bra and cat are not equal, we will get zero term. Correct? So here we have b times a, which means the whole term will be zero. Here we have b times a, which, mean, which means this term will be also equal to zero. And here the last term also has a times b, which means the whole term will be zero. Make sense? And uh, there this b times b brand cat will give one. Here it will be also one. And here it will also be one and one. And this bra a bra rho a cat will be rho a a, which is occupation of the ground state. So let's um, continue in in the middle box here. D, D, T, O, B. Minus gamma over 2 and this one. Rho, B, B. Times 2. Great. Correct. So from the first line, we have rho bb from here, and rho bb there. Minus gamma over 2 times n. Another minus here, which will get the equal of plus 2 rho bb. The factors 2 will cancel, so we just set up the notation for the rate, so that it will cancel here. And then d dt rho db equals minus gamma n plus 1 rho db plus gamma times n rho db. We do not need to repeat all this long path in order to get equation for rho AA. Because we know that rho AA plus rho BB, the total occupation is 1, and d dt of occupation of state 1 and state 2 equals what? 0. So if we want to do d dt of rho AB, we just swap the sign. Plus gamma plus 1 
minus gamma m rho we are very close to completion. Uh, so we have equation of motion in metal experiments, and we have a set of equations for population dynamics. We skip the uh, equations for all diagonal elements because you see they are not coupled to, uh, to, the, uh, to uh, equations for population dynamics. If our bus doesn't have memory, if it, all applications that we've made are correct, then dynamics of off diagonal and diagonal elements are decoupled. So we are free to pursue only diagonal elements, only populations. Um, Sixteen times five. Huh? 80% then? We are very, very close to completion. Right now, we have the sweetest part. That is a uh, simple analysis of this uh, balance equations. So what do we have next? Limits in time equals zero and time equals uh, infinity. <laughs> what do we have in this um, relaxation matrix? For minus correct or Sorry, yeah, that's from this one. Sorry, I thought. Yeah. Okay, so minus on the diagonal. Yeah, yeah. So the population of each decreases according to its proportion to its own, its own population. Um, temperature equals zero. M equals zero. Two minutes. Temperature equals infinity. M is much bigger than 1, therefore n plus 1 is equal to n. So in this case, in the so case... Is there a mistake in that equation? Which one? For dt rho AA. The, the equation in, in black under the equation in blue. It's no? Like, why? Yeah. N plus one rho a a. It uh, the rho a a gets depleted because of thermal excitation to higher level and uh, accumulates more population because of relaxation from excited state. Oh, so that's right. Okay. So in case of uh, um, zero temperature, we have nothing. In these two rows, in this uh, in this column, zero zero gamma minus gamma. Row, 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 row. 
right? So I think that this is most practical uh, equation in the whole course. It is simple enough, and it makes connection to other courses, like first order chemical reaction. This is one of the differential equations that you can quickly uh, solve. The uh, proportional to the occupation, no quadratic terms, and it just goes from state B to state A. Right? You see connection. Good. Very good. Um, how do we solve this equation? In, in the limit, time goes to infinity. If time goes to infinity, we assume that solution approaches steady state, approaches equilibrium, which means that infinite time, there will be no time dependence. So the um, time derivative will be equal to zero. So we write zero, zero equals zero gamma, zero minus gamma, gamma. So it is a standard way to find steady state. Steady I'm trying to finish everything in a few seconds. <laughs> so uh, if we open brackets here, we will we will get gamma times rho by rho, gamma plus gamma times rho dt equals zero, and at the same time, minus gamma times rho db equals zero. So it is a coupled set of equations, which means, and gamma is not equal to zero. So here is the mathematical logic. Gamma is positive and not equal to zero then logically it can be maintained only in case if rho bp is equal to zero. So rho bp at time equals infinity equals zero. And rho a equals one minus rho b equals one. So at time equals infinity, 100% of equation will go to the wrong term. Finally, we uh, proved something useful for the real world. It is a little trivial, we all expected it, but now we go through a very advanced quantum bluff theory. That everything will relax down to the ground state at zero temperature. <laughs> <laughs> Good achievement. What do we get uh, in the limit of infinite temperature? So we can use n plus either n or n plus one in both cases because one can be dropped in comparison to n. Minus gamma n plus gamma n plus gamma n minus gamma n. Which means that the flow in this case, the flow of uh, energy downwards was infinitely times bigger than upwards. Here is the equal. And if you do the steady state, you will, I'm just skipping this step, you draw the A to turn it into infinity, you will confirm, and draw the B to turn it into infinity, you will also confirm. So, uh, this solution approaches us to the center of the box here. 50 50 occupation of ground in the center. We are, we have done limits, time equals zero and time equals infinity. And you did steady state. What is left? The only th the thing that uh, I was promising for like a month.
<laughs> so we do have a process down going with intensity in plus one and going up with intensity in. Right? Let's look for the 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 ratio. How much the transition up is more or less probable than transition down? So we can so it doesn't depend on the value of the carbon and overall intensity, it depends only on temperature. And we do have plus one. So what do we do if we need to, to solve? Probably here we need to set up a common denominator. This one times one divided by exponential of h bar over kt minus one, and here we are multiplying denominator and denominator by the same uh, number. Minus one. Good. Yes, we can we can flip. Um, this means the same as we would place denominator of denominator into denominator. Although it is very simple, I better repeat it by calligraphy once again. T minus one, e h bar omega k t minus one, and here there is one plus exponential h bar omega by k t minus one. So we have one plus something minus one. One is cancelled, and here this. Denominator here and denominator there are the same. We can cancel them too. We need to do the e minus h bar omega divided by what's my constant here. Oh, so the intensity of transitions of thermal excitations are Boltzmann factor less efficient than thermal activated relaxation. Um, thermal phonon assist excitation is Boltzmann factor less intense than thermal monophonon assisted relaxation. relaxation. How can we summarize this verbal formula into Two words. Two words? Yes. You get the ones. Yes! Perfect. Where did you met data balance first? In which course? Or in which uh, area of proof? Number 19. 
<laughs> no, you had it before in some like uh, <laughs> hmm? <laughs> thermodynamics. No, in Scotland's book. You didn't saw it in the statistical mechanics of thermodynamics. In uh, introductory chemistry, like chem one fifty. Oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> is, is it the like? I thought you, you you've heard it many times in your life. So I'm, I'm just the second who tells you about dinner belts. Oh, good. Actually, but, okay, still big order. So by now you are certified experts in detailed balance theory from very background atomistic ab initio derivations, we came, and some very reasonable approximations, we came to the principle that governs most of the processes in the time result phenomenon. As soon as we, um, well, on a very short femtosecond scale, there is a dynamics without rotation, but as soon as we go longer for, let's say, 20 femtoseconds, everything goes through relaxation processes and everything follows this digital belt. So this relatively universal principle that can be shamelessly applied to almost any model. And if your model has more than two levels, you just do the same for each pair of them. We do not have time to go end level system, but general principles will be the same. No, no, no. Ad hoc is right now we use the first principle. So we uh, there, there is a control of approximations. We didn't um, we had a chance to set up all derivations either exactly or with an approximation that we can keep or neglect. So we, it's very well paved way. We never jumped over obstacle until someone else will explain how to do it. We did a good, fair job of uh, going step by step. And there are reasons to do it that it is correct. Independent of implementations and uh, uh, the physical system where it is applied to. So we, we are not as strict and rigorous as mathematicians. We didn't prove, but we carefully shown logical step-by-step -step the derivation. So even if some experiments or some calculations contradicted, we better believe this approach because we see the logic. Because in some random not backgrounded experiment or Calculation, there a special computation, there is a chance of human error or numerical error. And here it is median line that we can we can use as a reference point. Um, I look forward to your summary of the whole course in a week from now. Thank you much for being so dedicated in staying uh, up to the last meeting. Um, we have just one informal meeting this summer of the course in, and that's it. Have a success on all of your exams. Have a nice summer and see you many times on uh, occasions related to this. Last lecture of computation quantum chemistry two camp seven sixty seven is done. Uh, everyone meeting is dismissed. You are free to either leave or stop by and ask questions. This is the Washington Post. I'm the Washington uh, Wall Street Journal. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Uh, consume food. Uh, for the small uh, system that you gave me, mm -hmm. I did 10 eggs from the round. Exactly. Oh, you know, 10 eggs from the round. Uh,
you know how to do Oh yes, then it's uh, a word. Okay. This should, uh, if, if there are